This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org forward slash donate. For as little as $10 a month, you can help people find life-changing guidance. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma la ilma lana illa ma'allamtina innaka antil alim al-hakim. Allahumma alimna ma yinfa'una wa anfa'na bima tu'allimuna. Wa zidna min fadlika ilman wa amlan wa qurban ya arhamar rahimin. اللهم زدنا ولا تنقصنا وأكرمنا ولا تهنا وأعطنا ولا تحرمنا وأثرنا ولا تؤثر علينا. Right, بسم الله. Um, so where were we? We were with the ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah. <coughs> Allah Azza wa Jal had. <coughs> so we started with the discussion of the perfect book. In it is guidance for those that actually potentially are the God fearing. When we're doing this to connect it or reconnect everything. Show that the Quran is not just random. It's like it's this deep connection between everything. I'm just being brief in these though, because there's many more uh, detail and you know subtle connections. So talked about the perfect book. Those who benefit from it, and just in reality, what are people like? Those who benefit, they have the ultimate success. Those who choose not to benefit and they're openly saying it, we don't want anything to do with this, and they bought what they're gonna get. And, and then the, those that uh, don't have the nerve to say openly, but they're pretending to be believers, pretending to be people that benefit from it. So then there was a discussion about what their qualities are like and why they do this, right? And because of these qualities, you know, what kind of actions you can expect from them. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala co- comes back to the book and the point of the book. Hudan, right? Is perfect, amazing guidance. So we have the first command and prohibition in the Quran that comes... Um, that comes directly and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala although like I said it's a Madinan surah but Allah revealed it to be in different times but for it to be placed in this order <coughs> and the first thing is <coughs> humanity is addressed right so let's look at the ayat so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says <coughs> Ya ayyuhal nas u'budu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum walladhina min qablikum لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Right? O mankind, worship your Lord. Right? <coughs> Who created you and those before you that you may become righteous. Now this is very interesting, right? Because the first thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does is He addresses all of humanity, not just... So the case is made... The opportunity is given to everyone and the case is made against everyone as well, right? So he says, <clears throat> Ya ayyuhan nas. And then, so that, I just want to break this down a bit. The word Ya is used to call someone who's far away. The original usage in Arabic is to call someone who's physically far away. Or you can you can use it to call someone who's close, but you intend that their rank is really high. Sayyidina Yusuf, alayhi salatu wasalam, when he addresses his father, Ya abati. Right, and then when uh, Yaqub addresses Sayyidina Yusuf as well, Ya Bunayya, right? So there's respect, right? there's, a, there's polite, you know, respectful conversation, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya, you. So, <clears throat> so one mean, meaning is someone who's um, high in rank, and the other potentially is, is someone who's, uh, who's here, but he's just not got the point. So you, you, you're drawing his, his attention to a certain point. Focus on this, understand this. An example of this, when the Prophet وسلم, and Abu Bakr were in the cave and Abu Bakr is saying, Ya Rasulullah, if one of them looks at his feet, he'll see us. He said, Ya Abu Bakr, O Abu Bakr, you know, pay attention to this. Ma dhannuka bithnain, Allahu thalithuhuma. What do you think of two people who, you know, who, accompany, who are accompanied by Allah who makes the third among of them, right? <clears throat> so, drawing his attention. So here Allah is, is honoring humanity. It's like a, a broad, open uh, address, you know, and then he says, Ayyuha, so Ya, Ayyuhallan, Ayyuhannas. So you just break this down, Ayyuha, I won't go into it grammatically, but basically these, when coupled with Ya, is, there's a lot of honoring, 
Uh, and there's a lot of you're uh, speaking in a very uh, very endearing terms to someone. Ya ayyuhal Rasul, Ya ayyuhal Nabi, Ya ayyuhal Ladina Amanu. Those you believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does this. <coughs> and it can also be used <coughs> if the Ya is is meant to be like not high in rank but someone who's low and base is he also has the opposite effect. So Ya ayyuhal Ladina Kafaru. Or you have disbelieved, it's, it's looking at looking down. So he's speaking to all of humanity. Ya Yohannas. Right? <clears throat> so the opportunity is there for everyone, and he's speaking to everyone. He says, Urbudu Rabbakum Ulladi Khalaqakum. Worship your worship your loving Lord. That's what we're gonna say, right? <clears throat> so Ibadah, we talked about that in the Fatiha, complete devotion. Tabattul <clears throat> eh. You know, <clears throat> you know, dedicating yourself. Everyone dedicates their life to something, right? Whether it's you know pop stars or whether it's this or this that. Everyone. So he says, focus it on Allah. Dedicate your lives to Allah. Worship Allah. Lower yourselves before Allah. Urabudu Rabbakum. Now this in Arabic is beautiful because in Arabic a lot of stuff happens um, in a way you don't notice it unless you understand arabic so he's saying worship your lord your worship your loving lord because that's allah's relationship to us the word rob has a meaning of someone who's kind gentle he takes you from one stage to a higher stage to a higher stage he's your master he looks after you he, you know uh, but in in context certain elements are given precedence in some context the element of a master is given precedence uh, and most contexts the element of the one who's looking after you sharing his blessings uh, you know giving you his blessings in every moment looking you know all of these things so he's loving to you he's kind to you he's affectionate you know he looks after you he protects you your loving Lord. So in Arabic, what's happening here is Dhikr So Allah is mentioning what to do, worship Allah, and He's also giving us a reason why. The illa, the, the reason why we should worship, He's your Rabb. He's doing this for you all the time. So I said in the Fatiha that Allah deserves worship for His perfection and for His kindness and His favors. This is the first thing Allah's mentioned because, you know, it's easier <clears throat> to, although you might see something beautiful and you might appreciate it, but if that, if you owe something to the, to that person, most people are more motivated. Worship your loving Lord. Urbudu Rabbakum Ladi Khalaqakum. And then He gives a second reason, right? The one who created you. Right, and the word <clears throat> the word khalq in in Arabic khalqa has a meaning of someone being <coughs> someone be uh, of of creating something out of nothing. It doesn't exist now. It does, but according to a specific design and and to make it perfectly. Right, if you look at any piece of technology, they don't just sit down and throw it together. It's perfectly designed, like with the computer. The motherboard is going to connect, you know, be installed here. The CPU goes there. You know, the graphics card will be connected to it like this. All of these things, it's it's connected in a particular way. There's a perfect design. So Allah designed you. Look at your skeletal structure, and then look at all your nerves and your tendons, and you know, uh, all the blood vessels, right? The vascular, and then you've got the uh, you've got the uh, other systems that regulate, you know, your hormones in your body, you know, look at your eyes, how they are, all of these things, it's a perfect design. So he's saying, I've not only created you, I've done it in this beautiful, amazing, excellent way, right? And it also, which also alludes to his knowledge, which also alludes to his power, his perfection. So there's many reasons wrapped up in this, right? <clears throat> so, Rabbakum, worship your Lord who created you. وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ Right, and those who who came way before you, all those who, who came before you. So the Arabs are very proud of their <clears throat> their fathers and their ancestry, as were the Jews. Right. <clears throat> so he's saying he not only created you, but them. You're proud of them. Worship him for his creating of you and for create his creating of them. Right. And you know Allah's perfection is is is, is brought out here. So uh, the one who who created you and them, la allakum in so in hope, right? So who does the hoping? Can we say Allah's hoping? No, right? Because Allah subhanahu wa taala doesn't hope. Hope is when you don't know the result of uh, the outcome of something, but you you you're giving precedence to it happening. Or to you know it not happening right over the, you're giving precedence to the to the side which you think is positive because you don't know the result. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, <coughs> Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows everything, so you can't say Allah hopes, right? 
Um, so, you know, I, I can't say, um, I hope the sun will rise tomorrow, right? Unless I think the world might end tonight, right? But otherwise I know, right? And otherwise, if I say I hope the sun will rise tomorrow, then you can't take that word literally. It has to be a different meaning, right? Implied. So who's doing the hope here? The worshippers. You go and worship Allah. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ In the hope that you attain taqwa, that you become people of taqwa. Now taqwa is of three types broadly speaking right so there's the taqwa that takes you out of the out of the hellfire forever which is through iman so allah is addressing the the disbelievers they don't worship him he's saying stop you know worship me and what's the first act of worship la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah entering islam right <coughs> and that also is a level of taqwa the second level broad level <coughs> is doing what Allah's told you to do and not doing what he's told you not to do right avoiding what, what's not meant to be done and doing what you're meant to do and <clears throat> so that's the second level and then the highest level is so this applies to the believers and the disbelievers right because they could potentially do this and then the highest level is having Allah as your number one goal and desire and your efforts and your focus and everything about you is just Complete devoted, completely devoted to Allah. Uh, remember the, the name of your Lord, Allah, and completely devote yourself to Him, right? <clears throat> so that's also the hope of attaining that. So there's this applies to everyone, those that are not believers, to get to the stage where they are believers, and those who are believers, you know, and, and also the first group, to get to the stage where, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, we're all a work in progress to get to the stage where, you know, we're worshipping him. And then <clears throat> the last one is to reach the ultimate uh, levels of Iman. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <clears throat> after this, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ And then he gives us how many reasons he's, he's given. He's our Rabb, he's created us, and he gives us another reason now. الذي جعل لكم الأرض فراشا والسماء بناء وأنزل من السماء فأخرج به من الثمرات رزقا لكم فلا تجعلوا لله أندادا إن كنتم تعلمون He who made you the earth a bed right spread out and the sky a ceiling and sent down from the sky rain and brought forth thereby fruits as provision for you so do not attribute to Allah equals while <coughs> while you know uh, while you know that there is nothing similar to him right okay so what's being said here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is <coughs> addressing us <coughs> with giving us an, another reason <laughs> the one who ja'ala means to make something and make it firmly and permanently like that right it's like we talked about when they put the fingers in the ears so he made for you the earth uh, a firash a firash literally you can say like a couch or a sofa or a bed some uh, a comfortable place for you to sit or lie in right is the earth like this? Not literally, but what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying is that Allah has made the earth perfectly suited for our needs. You can live anywhere on the earth practically. <coughs> Apart from the extreme north and the extreme south, you can live anywhere. You know, there's people that Eskimos that live in Alaska, right? They have everything they need. There are people that live in the deserts. They have everything they need. There are people that live in really, uh, you know, hot tropical climates, hot, humid tropical climates. They have everything they need. There are people that live in, you know, normal, you know, uh, more temperate climates, right? <clears throat> We can live practically anywhere on earth. Our food is there. There's, there's you know, ways and means of getting water, planting f food, getting. Allah's made it all easy for us. There's the fossil fuels that we have. <clears throat> there's, you know, the trees. There's, there's so many things we have just to facilitate life and not just life, but living comfortably. You know, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, by the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we live better than kings did in the past. And that's a fact, right? Kings didn't have running water, right? Kings didn't have a flush. When they went to the bathroom, they flush it. You know, they don't have to worry about that, right? And, <clears throat> you know, the heating that we have, Alhamdulillah, you know, Allah's given us so much, right? So the whole earth, right, is made it comfortable for us, right? That, that we live in it, that we, that we can live in it. Allah جعل لكم الأرض في راشن والسماء بناء and Unfortunately, I can't go into this anymore, much more. But he's made the sky as a strong edifice, a strong structure, right? <coughs> so if you're in a desert, <coughs> if you're in a, in a place where there's no light pollution, you see the sky over you. Literally, it's like a canopy. It's, it's over you. So it's like there's something built over you. And these are basic proofs. You know, when you go to, if you go to um, 
atheists if you go to people that you say oh, Allah doesn't exist they give you long-winded complicated discussions to try and disprove God to you or, or they'll throw questions out there that you know they throw a simple question that requires you know to understand it it requires a detailed answer and then say see, see there is no answer because you can't answer it just like that right but in reality Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has plenty of proof right so then <clears throat> this is basic proof there was a Bedouin Arab he was asked um you know how do you how do you know God exists? He says al ba'ara tu tadullu al al ba'ir. You know cow, camel droppings point to the fact that there was a camel. Wa wa athar athar lakdam al al masir, and footsteps in the desert point to the fact that someone was walking here. For sama o that that to abroad to the sky full of all these beautiful constellations. Will ardu that to fijaj and this earth full of all these valleys, right? Will biharu that to amwaj and all these oceans with all these waves crashing upon the shore. Allah to dulu al al alim al qadir. Do these point to the being that knows everything and can do anything? Of course they do. Right, so another co contemporary meaning uh, that we can understand from this is that he made the sky as a structure. You, you can also the sky refers to anything above you, right, and to the physical thing, body of the sky, which um, uh, <clears throat> which will be destroyed in the day of judgment and be peeled back. So, <clears throat> so um, he says, Allah uh, Muhammad. So uh, what we can understand now. That, um, what's the point of a structure? Like, why do you have a, a roof over your head, right? It's to prevent rain, it's pre to prevent anything, you know, coming and damaging the in internal structure, right? And like, if just, you know, imagine there's trees growing, all the leaves would fall in or, you know, conkers or whatever falling in into your house if there wasn't a roof. So it's a part of the completion of a structure and it's also there for protection and this can also refer to the ozone layer, right? Our entire atmosphere, right? And what it does, it blocks out all the <coughs> the damaging solar radiation, just bounces off, it sends it back out into space. Now, if there was air in space and you were there just exposed to the sun, you'd be fried in, you know, in a very short space of time because of all the radiation. But the atmosphere blocks it, right? <coughs> so he says he's done this for us, right? Uh, <clears throat> and he sent down water, he sent down rain from the sky, water, and he says, an indefinite, many, many uh, lots of water, right? The entire planet gets its needs fulfilled, right? <clears throat> and it's the same, the Prophet told us, it's the same amount of rain every year that go, comes down, it's just distributed differently. And so he brought forth, brought out of the, of the sky with the flower, with the water, uh, fruits. Is it just fruits? No, he brought other things, right? But fruit is was is known as a dessert, right? Before you had, you know, uh, waffles and everything. Before you had these, extra, you know, white sugar and all these other things that people make as desserts. What did you have for, for enjoyment? You had fruit, right? And, you know, sometimes there's nothing like, like a cold watermelon in hot weather, something, like, you know, stuff like this. So... He did this as fruit, so we can eat and we can benefit from it, right? So he, he, he made, made all the food that grows from the ground, but he picked fruit because that's the, it's the most enjoyable, right? If you just want to have a snack, are you just going to go boil some rice and eat your boil, <laughs> boiled rice? Clearly not. You're going to want to eat something that's tasty, right? That you enjoy eating, like a mango, right? Or passion fruit or something. So... <clears throat> um, so he's created fruit, right? So th this is another reason to thank him. And Iman is like a, a advanced stage of thanks, right? Um, <clears throat> and all of it is rizq for you. Rizq is something that comes regularly, time after time after time. So it's not like rain came, you know, four score and eight years ago, you know, and, you know, some fruit and you know, vegetation, vegetables grew and we've just been eating them. When it runs out, we're, we're going, that's it, humanity is over. No, it's regular, right? It's regular and it's what you can benefit from, right? All of these things. There are loads of meanings in this, right? And then, so then he says, um, so don't make ja'al again. Make some, something, it's not its purpose, right? You could get a lump of iron ore, right? And you can't get this lump of iron ore and take it into your kitchen and, you know, start scraping off your butter to put it on your toast because it's just not suited for that shape-wise. Ja'al, you know, ij'alhu sikinan. You make it into a knife. You make it into this appropriate shape and size, right? Like that. So he's saying, Fala, don't make 
Andad idols, right? And Nid, Andad is the opposite of Nid, which is someone who resembles another, right? Perfectly, right? <clears throat> So do, do these uh, someone who resembles another perfectly, uh, or you know, or opposes the other person because he's is his opposite, right? Almost like you know, I don't say yin and yang, but you know, like two two opposites that are perfectly suited, right? So he's saying, don't make these things as as opposition for God, right? Can they really make a God? No. What do they do? They get a lump of dates. And they'll just squish him into the shape of a man, take all the stones out, squish him into a shape, and then they'll worship it. Oh, so and so, uh, my lump of dates, you know, everything good I have comes from you, and all the stuff they would do, right? And uh, <clears throat> and they do that. And like Sayyidina Omar said, you know, when, when the times were hard, you know, they'd take the lump of dates and say, This is going to hurt me more than it hurts you, and they'll, <laughs> they'll eat the dates, and that's it, right? And then when times are good again, they'll make another one. <clears throat> so don't make these things as andad. Don't make these things as replacements, as equals right, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your mind, right? Because in reality, there cannot be anyone equal. But what they could do, is, what they did do is they said that, you know, we don't really worship God, we worship these idols. Why? Because anything we need, we go to them. And these idols take care of it for us. Anything that we're after, we worship the idols. So, and on the day of judgment, they're going to testify for us that we were right in, in, in worshipping them and that they truly are gods and all this sort of stuff. They do to say like in, if the day of judgment comes, they'll testify for us, right? <clears throat> and so, I mean, there's a lot more in this ayah, but you know, like these things don't have any volition. They can't protect themselves. They can't remove any harm from themselves. So, you know, this is the worst of crimes, right? Abdullah bin Mas'ud asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, ayyu dhambi a'zam, which is the worst crime in Allah, in the sight of Allah. And he said, Qala an taj'ala lillahi niddan wa huwa khalaqak. And that you make, uh, you make uh, an, an op, you make a, 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 an equal to Allah when he's created you, right? It's like, it's like, um, you know, you meet, you know, you meet a new, um, uh, you, 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 a new neighbor moves in and a nice old lady, whatever. But your mom's been looking after you all of your life, and you know she's been doing all these things and she cooks and does all sorts of stuff for you. But then when Mother's Day comes, whatever, you, <laughs> or some other time, you go buy loads of gifts and go give it to this other lady who's done nothing for you. Does it make sense? Clearly not, right? So you say not doing this, right? And what's interesting, well, this is another really point where the Arabic really brings it out. <clears throat> it says, فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ Right? Don't make for Allah. Don't make equals of Allah, right? These idols alongside Allah. Uh, you know, whilst you know, right? Whilst you know, whilst you're people of understanding, you can think and you can, this Bedouin Arab with no education can figure out Allah created all of this, right? So why can't you, right? Anyone can do it, right? Anyone can, yeah, go read Robinson Crusoe, right? <clears throat> There's a point where he's ill and he just crawls off to this hill and he looks across and he's, he just carefully, beautifully deduces God must have made all this one being, right? <coughs> and Rationally, you can get to this conclusion. <clears throat> so, but then he says, and don't make for Allah these nids, these idols, right? Or these opposites. Uh, and so he clearly mentions Allah's name, saying, He, Him, this being of absolute perfection who deserves all worship and all, you know, all praise, Him. You're going to go make uh, something to oppose Him, an equal of him, for Him, to Him? Don't, right? Whilst you know. Right. And you and clearly, you know, they do know, right? And anyone can get to this knowledge, right? There's a bit more uh, detail here, but let's move on. And then he says, <clears throat> after this, <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa says, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّنْ مِثْلِهِ وَدْعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ And if you're, in, <clears throat> if you're in doubt about what we have sent down upon our servant, then produce a surah like thereof and call upon your witnesses other than Allah if you should be truthful. Interesting. So now <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa in kuntum fi raibin. So firstly, this is you know the first address 
of Allah to humanity and he's, he's saying here I'm proving it to you as well that this is the truth right and then there's a, a threat and then there's a good news coming straight after which suits the first address right so <clears throat> Allah let's put it simply and quickly <clears throat> the Arabs <clears throat> the Arabs were people who had mastered their language and they were really their Arabic is really beautiful and really eloquent and the best poets there were 10 poems or some say seven that was the pinnacle of arabic literature and they revered it's only who was gifted with language was like a superstar in their in their society and they revered this and so what they did is <clears throat> they got these poems and they hung them in the kaaba saying this is the best so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the quran that surpassed the very best achievements all the arabs had in their own language and he said okay if you don't believe that this is from allah then all you have to do is replicate this. And first the challenge was replicate the entire Quran. This was in Mecca and a lot of Quran, Quran had been revealed, roughly two thirds was revealed throughout Mecca. So <coughs> replicate the entire Quran. Because <coughs> they said, oh, this is a godly speech. This isn't divine speech, it's human speech. Go replicate it. You can't, okay, first the entire Quran, they couldn't do that. Okay, then do, do 10 surahs, just bring 10 surahs, right? And the shortest surah, inna a'ata inna kal kawthir. It's not a small feat. A surah has a, a theme, a surah has things that are said. The beginning is connected to the end. There's all these rhetorical devices, they have to make sense, the choice of words, the, the sequencing of the words. It's just, you know, it's not simple. <clears throat> so from, going from the entire Quran, okay, just do 10. Okay, then one surah, right? Just bring one surah, right? Like the Quran. They couldn't do it. So then in Medina, we got this verse revealed where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, bring one surah which is similar to the style of the Quran. It doesn't have to represent it. You can talk about anything else, right? Talk about rabbits and trees if you want, but just the style of the Quran, they couldn't do it, right? So he says, in kuntum fi raibin. And if you're in, if you have raib, what do they say? This raib, <coughs> this doubt which causes distress <clears throat> in reality now this verse can be interpreted in many ways which is part of the beauty of the, beauty of the Quran so in reality <clears throat> deep down they were absolutely sure some of them might have had a bit of rave like Abu Sufyan as we found in the, in the seerah but uh, he's saying uh, <coughs> we're in <coughs> and if and this if is used to show that <coughs> a it's, it's mocking them and in like the disbelievers that and if you're in doubt about this it's like you know showing someone the sea and if you're in doubt that the sea is wet then do this right you know it's like that but it's also in to show like if that this isn't the case and it shouldn't be the case anyone with a with a with a reasonably working brain can see that it's not the case right if you, if you have this right and he's saying that if you are firmly in raib so it's like raib is this, this doubt that causes distress and uneasiness is a container and they're in there not saying that the quran is causing rape if you're in rape meaning that the quran doesn't do this the problem's with you right but in quantum fi raibin even the slightest amount of it right if you're in it because no for other people when you understand the quran no it increases iman right <coughs> of mimma nazzalna ala abdina regarding you know if you're in have this rave about what we reveal to our servant right fatu bi suratin then bring a single individual surah and it's indefinite to show any surah or a surah what's a surah sur is, is like a wall that surrounds the city so it's like a, a theme and a collection of uh, you know points <clears throat> and ideas that Allah conveys within a group of uh, verses, right? So it's you know each surah has its theme and stuff, right? So just to bring a single surah like this, to be surah in mithlihi, similar to this in any way of its style. Just have to match it completely. Wadu shuhada akum and call your shuhada. Shuhada number of meanings. One of them is someone who's present with you. And what Arabs would do, they they had individuals who they would call their shuhada their backup so like the most important people in in a village or in, in a tribe that when these people had need they would go and be present in front of them so it says those people are present with them those people who they would turn to in their need here help us out right 
Another meaning which some of the other ulama have said is <clears throat> shuhada as in the idols because they're saying why the idols shuhada shuhada sh shuhada here is plural of shaheed which is a witness saying that they will witness for them that you know yes we you know we are gods and they were pr properly worshiping us thus they were, they were claiming right there's a few other interpretations but let's let's just stick with these and call your shuhada so in one meaning it can be uh, the idols, but in another meaning, it can be anyone who you turn to for help, right? Especially your idols. Min dunillahi, those who who are besides God. So the meaning is except for God, because they would they would admit Allah created everything. So except for God, <clears throat> call everyone else, right? But the other meaning is min dunillahi, all those beneath Allah. You're worshiping, you're giving importance to these beings, and they are they're not as important as Allah subhanahu wa taala. Allah is perfect. Min dunillahi. In kuntum sadiqin, if uh, if you're truthful, right? If you're truthful, and clearly they're not, right? And you know, were they able to do it? No, they rather they rather spend, you know, God knows how much money and gold and sacrifice their, their lives and their children, everything, but not do this. All they had to do is produce one chapter to prove the prophet wrong, and they couldn't. Yeah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Fa illam tafalu. So then Allah subhanahu wa taala says, <clears throat> and if you don't. Right, and he doesn't say, uh, and if you do not bring pr produce a chapter like this uh, or like the Quran, it doesn't say that. It just says if you don't do it, right. Meaning, there's no point giving, uh, focusing on, on that, and repeating the whole thing in detail because they can't do it anyway, right. That's so for ilm tafalu. But if you do not, and you'll never be able to, then fear the fire whose fuel is men and stones prepared for the disbelievers. And if you're not able to do so, and if you don't, and tafa'alu in the future at any point, right? So, right? And then, and learn strong future negation, right? So, <clears throat> it doesn't mean permanence in and intrinsically, but for, through the context of the ayah, it means permanently, right? Now, and if you don't, and you'll never be able to, you won't be able to, like produce something like the Quran. Um, <clears throat> Then <clears throat> have taqwa again. We talked about taqwa, right? That like deflecting something, uh, 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 and deflect this fire whose fuel is men and stones. Who are the men? Them, right? Because of their disbelief. And who are the stones? The stones that they carved the idols out of. In the kumumata abuduna min dunillahi hasabu jahannam. You and what you worship, you know, beneath Allah, those things that are beneath Allah in rank are going to be the fuel of the hellfire of jahannam, right? <coughs> and so beware of, of this fire. So he says, فَتَّقُنَّار. So what's actually being said is implied in Arabic. If you don't and you'll never be able to, then do not oppose the Quran and and accept this Quran. If you don't, you'll never be able to accept this Quran, submit to it, believe, because if you don't do that, then you're going to hell. Then you're going to this fire. It's a fair, it's a fair warning for everyone, right? All your and it's not as if you know if they do that and they lose out. No, they'll actually gain an infinite amount of happiness and you know felicity and success in paradise, right? <clears throat> so Allah subhanahu wa taala is saying that if you don't if you if you're not able to do this and you persist in your kufr, it's as though you're already in hell, right? That's how powerfully it's, it's mentioned. Then you know, be beware, deflect this fire. Um, how through iman and good works, right? Taking on the huda, uh, uh, whose fuel is men and stones, and is prepared <clears throat> for whom? For these people, right? For the disbelievers. Prepared only for those who deliver. Uh, and the word says it all. The kaf is prepared for a kafir who knows the truth and he covers it up, like we said, right? He deliberately covers it up and turns away from the truth from the truth after being convinced of it, right? And the word kafirin also implies that they're firm and you know they're firm on their disbelief, not wanting to change. That's the way they're gonna stay, right? kafirin, and it's being prepared. It already exists, right? And if hell exists. It doesn't change. It doesn't go. It doesn't leave. It's there. Your choice, right? kafirin. So we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to protect us from hell uh, and even going anywhere near it. And uh, what we'll do next is we're gonna look at this, the other side of this coin. Is <clears throat> Allah after the threat? Allah is going to give the good news and the, uh, to the believers and to anyone that would believe. And we're going to look.
further into this. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit SeekersGuidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit SeekersGuidance.org forward slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.